My name is Iris Tianco, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to NACHO's Nutrition and Model Bending Standards webcast. I will be your narrator today for the first in a three-part webcast series about chronic disease prevention initiatives for local health departments. As the national voice for local health departments, the National Association of County and City Health Officials is a leader, partner, and catalyst to ensure that people are able to make choices that help keep them healthier and live longer. To make an impact on population chronic disease rates in the United States, the NATO Chronic Disease Team works with local health departments to expand and promote evidence-based chronic disease prevention activities and promote policy, systems, and environmental change in communities. The goal of this webcast is to help local health departments to adopt and use the nutrition and model vending standards at the local level. This webcast is a part of a series that will highlight strategies that local health departments, external stakeholders, and citizens can use to encourage active living, healthy eating, physical activity, and disease management in local communities. NATO's chronic disease team encourages partnerships with CDC, national partners, and other stakeholders that promote effective chronic disease prevention and management strategies and policies. For nutrition and physical activity concerns, the Center for Science and the Public Interest has contributed to local health departments' efforts to develop model policies relating to chronic disease prevention, nutrition, food access, and physical activity. On this webcast, Katie Bishop from CSPI will present on healthier food fo choices and vending. Hello everyone, I'm Katie Bishop. I'm a Nutrition Policy Associate at CSPI and I'm going to be talking to you a bit about healthy vending. So many people are thinking about how to improve the foods and beverages sold in public places and healthy vending is one of the ways to do that. The Center for Science and the Public Interest is a food, nutrition, and public health advocacy organization and we also coordinate the National Alliance for Nutrition and Activity, or NANA a coalition of over 420 national, state, and local organizations with a diversity of focus areas and perspectives. At the national level, we have groups like the American Heart Association, American Public Health Association, and NACHO, as well as many state and local groups, including health departments. For more information on NANA, feel free to visit the NANA website. Um, healthy food choices for public places, including healthy vending, is a priority area for both CSPI and NANA. Numerous factors contribute to obesity, and we're working on many of them. Schools, restaurant food, grocery store checkouts, but workplace nutrition is important as well. Almost half of our waking hours are spent at work, and studies have shown that there's a relationship between the physical and social environments of the workplace and the health and behaviors of employees. The foods available in employee cafeterias and vending machines often determine what people eat throughout the day, including for state and local governments, which employ 17 million people and have many visitors each day. In addition, healthy food in public places is emerging as a promising low-cost public health strategy, and it helps governments to walk the walk. It undermines state and local prevention, state and local obesity prevention work if we have large obesity prevention campaigns and then lack healthy options um, in the vending machines, concession stands, and cafeterias in public places. It also helps to support and model healthy eating and shape social norms. And more and more people are interested in healthier snack options. In a 2010 survey by the Snack Food Association, they found that 74% of consumers are trying to eat healthier, 65% are eating specific foods to lose weight, and the sales of healthier snacks are outpacing traditional snacks four to one. And ultimately, this kind of work impacts food manufacturers. If demand for healthier options increases, then food companies will continue to create new healthy options and they'll also reformulate old favorites to reduce the negative contributions to the diet, like calories, saturated fat, added sugars, and sodium. At CSPI, I provide support and technical assistance to states and localities that are working in this area. So some of the things that I do would be to review standards and policies that the state or locality is considering. Also, I can share lessons learned and link people together. So since I'm talking to people all around the country, 
um, a lot of the same issues arise. So I might be able to talk somebody through what another area learned about that, or else connect you directly with somebody in another state or locality who's already experienced that and worked through it. In addition, one of the things I'm going to talk about on this webcast is working on implementation strategies. So it's really important to get the policy passed, but then it also needs to be implemented well. So I can help people make sure that these policies are implemented so that people are actually purchasing the healthier options. And in addition, I can help problem solve with issues that arise with the vendors or other concerns. And we're also reviewing and developing materials in this area. So one of the materials that we've developed through the NANA Coalition is model vending machine standards. So these standards address both foods and beverages. Um, they limit the negative contributions to the diet, like calories, saturated fat, trans fat, sodium, and added sugar, and they increase positive contributions to the diet. So one of the things that's really great about the NANA standards is that they make sure that the foods actually have some real food to them. So this, the standards require that the snack foods have at least a fourth of a cup of fruits, vegetables, lower fat-free dairy, nuts or seeds, or that they're a whole grain rich product, or that they have at least 10% of the daily value of a nutrient of public health concern. And those include calcium, potassium, vitamin D, and fiber. And these have to be naturally occurring nutrients, so they can't just be fortified products. So you can't just take a junk food and add some calcium to it and have it meet the standards. It needs to actually be a component of the snack food like calcium and yogurt. And another thing that we've done is put together a product list. So many people, when they're thinking about healthy vending, run across um, complaints that they're going to end up with a vending machine full of water and broccoli or something like that. So what we've done is we've put together a list of products that would meet the NANA standards and would also meet many other healthy vending standards. So this product list has things like waters, including flavored waters and seltzers, as long as they're not calorically sweetened, 100% um, juice, and also diluted 100% juice products. So you could have um, like a seltzer mixed with 100% juice, or low in fat-free dairy products, fortified soy milks, diet juice drinks, diet and unsweetened teas, low-calorie sports drinks, diet soft drinks, and coffees. And when I'm talking about the diet and low calorie beverages, with the NANA standards, you can have up to 40 calories per container. So the container could be as large as the vending machine could accommodate, but you can only have 40 calories in that container. And then in terms of food products, there are also many things that meet the NANA standards. So some of these you would need to have a refrigerated vending machine for, but many of them are shelf stable products. So you could have fresh fruits and vegetables. There are many other fruit products on the market, including dried fruits, both the traditional chewy dried fruit that we're used to, and then there are many new freeze-dried fruit options available that are crunchy. Um, there are fruit cups, fruit leathers, and, and other fruit snacks that are made with 100% fruit, um, unsweetened apple sauces, and other frozen fruit options. There are many different yogurts that meet the standards, um, different nuts and seeds, some granola bars, whole grain cookies, baked chips, whole wheat crackers, popcorn, as well as sugar-free gum. So as I mentioned before, it's important to get these policies passed, but then it's also important to make sure that these policies get implemented well. So the NANA standards don't just have nutrition guidelines, but they also have implementation strategies to make sure that these policies are implemented successfully. Because we don't just want these policies to go into place, we want people actually purchasing the healthy foods. If they're not purchasing the healthy foods, then there's a good chance that they're either bringing unhealthy foods from home or they're running out to the local 7-Eleven to get something from there. So we really want to make sure that healthy products are available and then people are eating the healthy products. So one of the first things that you can do in working in this area when you're trying to implement a policy is offer to partner with your vendor. Vendors are often worried about how these types of changes are going to hurt their business or how they're going to affect their business and how they will affect sales. 
So if you offer to partner with them, you can offer to do some of these implementation techniques to make sure that it goes smoothly. Your vendor is going to be very knowledgeable about their business, but local health departments will be more knowledgeable about health promotion and will have more access to the customers so they could do more health promotion with them. And one of the places to start when you're implementing is to talk to your vendor about which products aren't selling well in the machine. So if you're not doing 100% healthy products, then a good place to start is look at which products aren't selling well and replace those with the healthy products. Because the vendor is going to be really scared about taking their top selling item out of the vending machine. But if you start with things that aren't selling well, then they won't be as afraid of the healthy vending standards. Another thing that you can do is look at different pricing techniques. So if you are pricing the unhealthy food less expensive than the healthy food, then you're not supporting the healthy choice. If the Snickers bar is 75 cents and the granola bar is $1.50, then people are gonna be more likely to buy the Snickers bar unless they really want to eat that healthy granola bar. So one of the things that you can do is to make the healthy option either similar in price or better yet, less expensive than the unhealthy option. And in different places where this has been implemented, it's been shown that having these pricing techniques increases the sale of healthy options and it also has revenue remaining stable. So by balancing out the prices, the vending machine doesn't lose any money. And another thing that you can do is use placement techniques. So if all of the healthy options are in the bottom row of the vending machine, many people won't even notice that they're there. So it's important to have the healthy products right at eye level or right along the side where the keypad is so that people notice that they're there and they're more likely to purchase them. And other things that you can do are different promotion techniques. So you could send emails to staff, you could put flyers up on staff bulletin boards, you could do a short presentation at the beginning of a staff meeting or put posters up in the hallways. I know that I used to work in a state government building and after visiting the vending machine a couple of times and realizing there were no options there that I wanted, I stopped visiting the vending machines. So it's good to let people know that there are new options there for them to check out and then also let them know why they should be purchasing those healthy options. And one of the things we're doing at CSPI right now is putting together some promotional posters that you could put directly on a vending machine. So those will be up on our website very soon and people would be able to print those out and use those as promotional materials. And another thing that is important to do is talk to your vendor about the front and side panel of the vending machine. So it, especially with beverage vending machines, if you have a picture of an ice cold full calorie Coca-Cola on the front of the machine, then as people are walking up to per make a beverage purchase, they're going to be thinking about the full calorie Coca-Cola. But if you have an ice cold water or a diet beverage or some other low calorie beverage, then they're going to be more likely to think about that beverage as they're walking up to the vending machine. And another thing that's really important is to provide education. So to educate both leadership and employees on the benefits of having healthy options, to help them understand why the changes are happening and why they should purchase the healthy options. If leadership isn't on board, then it's going to be very difficult to implement these policies successfully and get everybody else on board. So some other things that you could do would be to hold taste tests. People who've implemented healthy vending machines have found that by holding taste tests, they can identify which products the employees like in those different locations, and then the vendor knows what to stock the vending machine with so that the products actually sell. And another thing that's important is to conduct surveys. So you could do an online survey, a paper survey, you could even have a comment box. Um, but just to get feedback from your customers to find out which products they enjoy, which products they don't enjoy, which products they're eating at home that could be in a healthy vending machine but they're not seeing there. And then finally, you could combine a bunch of these techniques in a kickoff event. So you could speak for a little while at a staff meeting, have some 
of the healthy products available for people to test and then have a survey for them to fill out about how they felt about those healthy products, what they'd like to see in a healthy vending machine, and really just get people informed about why they should be eating those healthy options and inspiring them to go to that new healthy vending machine. So another thing that we've done at CSPI is put together a financial impact fact sheet. So as I mentioned before, vendors are very concerned that they're going to lose money or that they're going to put the healthy options in there and the healthy options will go bad before people can purchase them. So another way that they'll lose money. Um, so we have found that people ha have implemented nutrition standards. Oftentimes they don't see any impact on revenue or they have some have actually seen an increase in revenue. Um, so at Rady Children's Hospital in San Diego, California, they increased the number of healthier beverage choices available in cafeterias and vending machines. They conducted an education campaign and they implemented placement strategies to make the healthier options more prominent. In over four months, the revenue remained stable, healthier beverage purchases increased 40%, and the healthiest beverage purchases increased 64%. So the healthiest beverages were things like water. And in Baldwin Park, California, they implemented nutrition standards for 100% of the foods and beverages sold in city vending machines. And in the initial six months, the city did experience a dip in sales, but after six months, revenue re returned to previous levels and that's where it's remained. So this is a case where they probably didn't do some of those implementation techniques of getting people to know that they were going to be making changes, why they should be making the changes. So people did get used to the products and start purchasing them, but it just took a little while for that to happen. And then in the Chicago Parks District in February of 2012, they implemented 100% healthier snack options in, in park vending machines. And the revenue has always varied considerably from month to month due to popular programs starting and ending, but revenue did not decrease. And the park wellness manager said that vending sales overall have gone up and exceeded sales forecast. And in the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services, they did a three month pilot program, which demonstrated that with 50 to 60% healthy options in vending machines, the vendor experienced a $670 increase in sales compared to the same three month period in the previous year. So these examples really highlight that you should use those implementation techniques because when you do, then it's going to be successful and the vendors won't see that their sales have been affected. Um, so on our website, we do have a financial impact fact sheet, which has these four examples and a few others that show places that have implemented nutrition standards and where it's going well. So this is our Healthier Food Choices for Public Places website. We do have the model vent Nana vending machine standards up there, as well as the product list, the financial impact fact sheet, um, our promotional materials will be up there soon. We have many fact sheets up there, both general fact sheets just on what healthier food choices for public places is. Then we also have fact sheets on working with blind vendors and what the Randolph Shepherd program is. Um, and we have a webinar up there. We have toolkits and other materials from other organizations. So there's really a lot of resources there for people who want to work in this area. And then finally, here is my contact information. If you do have any questions about the materials covered on this webcast or about anything on the website, or you just need some help either um, getting started in this area or if you're already working on trying to have healthier foods in public places, then feel free to reach out to me. And you can also follow CSPI on Facebook or Twitter. Thank you for listening to part one of the chronic disease prevention webcast series. As a reminder, to access additional chronic disease prevention fact sheets, issue briefs, and publications, please visit NACHO's chronic disease prevention webpage. For technical assistance, email the NACHO chronic disease team at chronicdisease at